Welcome to part two of uh, Psychology and Prayer. As we were talking about last time, the ideas that we have about prayer, about davening, have really given us some pretty bad habits. And I want to keep pushing forward with that notion because we have a lot of time to daven these days. Uh, many of us have less uh, work to do. Uh, many of us are stuck at home. Um, in most places, people are not davening with a minion. And that really presents some fantastic opportunities. And one of the things we really need to pay attention to is this this idea, you know, of of, of rushing. Um, you know, the, the, the opening the opening a parak in Ishayo has Hashem saying, Who asked you? Literally, me bikesh zos miyedchem. Who asked you to come into my courtyards and 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 trample them with your busyness? That was referring to people coming and bringing uh, sacrifices or showing up at the at the base of Migdash, at the temple, without any real, without any real commitment, other than just some kind of ritualary, superstitious need to be there, and those needs are very powerful. Um, so we show up for davening, and then um, oftentimes we could just rush through everything. Blah, 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 blah. Um, it's a real problem. It's a problem because. Is coming from somewhere. Um, we have an obligation. Many of the prayers are obligatory. Uh, you, you, there's a there's a basic body to what we say, and so on the one hand, you feel the sense that you have to discharge your obligation, um, and because of that, and because you feel you have limited time, you're going to rush through the words. The problem is that's really against. Uh, certainly against the spirit of the law. It's the same issue that Yeshayo was bemoaning about, uh, giving voice to Hashem's uh, complaint and burden at, at feeling people showing up who didn't really want to say anything or wanted to just dispense with their obligations. But um, aside from that, even halakhically, it can be a problem because the the requirement, uh, it's brought down in, 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 in the Bach, in... Uh, Samach Aleph in 61, uh, a commentary on the tour, it's brought down that you're supposed to be praying as if you're counting money uh, one word at a time. Now, interestingly, the Bach mentions that by Kriya Shema, which obviously is more important because it is a biblical directive, certainly, to read the first, the first verse, possibly the first paragraph, maybe the entire thing as well. Um... So there you have to really be careful. But the Kitzer and others, the Kitzer and Simon Yudawad, says it's for Pesukah de Zimra. And you, so you, here you have a problem. You know, you want to pray, um, but you probably don't want to pray all those words. It's long. It's very, very long. And so you end up basically trying to say the words because that's the ritual requirement. And that's exactly like the fellow that shows up at Jerusalem bringing the sacrifice. Um, maybe he just wanted to bring a small little uh, sacrifice or donate a few uh, a few shekel, and but he has to bring for all his different requirements sacrifices, and Hashem knows, and it's a burden. And here you are, you're in this situation too. You could be in this situation. And so in our ordinary everyday davening, oftentimes things are rushed, especially certain tefillahs, the end of davening, the Aleinu is incredibly rushed, the Yom uh, oftentimes is not, is not said uh, or not said properly. And it's, a, and it's a challenge. What are you going to do? Because you really are supposed to say all the words, but then you're not really doing yourself any favor. So the first thing we can do, and this is why this is called psychology and prayer, is we must acknowledge the truth. It, human beings are, are, are so capable of lying to themselves. Um, you are not fulfilling your obligation by 
rambling through the words any more than if you said um, less and you said it with kavana, as we said. The first simon is tov ma'at bekarvona mihar b'shelo b'kavana. The first simon in Shulchan Aruch says that. Now, I'm not telling you that it's permitted to skip parts of prayer. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that it's prohibited to mumble through prayer and not say it properly. So, you're choosing between two issues, each one not permitted. Now, I ask you, we can't really know what God is thinking, and we can't really know what God wants for sure. But God expects us to use our seichel, to use our brains, because he gave it to us. What do you think he wants? What do you think he'd prefer? If you're only going to do one, both are not permitted options. Plan A is not permitted, and plan B is not permitted. Plan A is to basically treat prayer as if it's a ritual, rushing through saying what, if you were to actually to say slowly, would probably take you anywhere between an hour and 15 minutes and an hour and a half, and that's without a minion. Or, plan B is to select certain pieces and say it more slowly. Uh, both are not permitted. You can't skip most parts of davening. There are certain parts you could skip, but and there are options in theory, um, but it's not really permitted. So, which one's better to skip and to say it with a, a great meaning and devotion or to rush through? I ask you, I can't tell you either are permitted, but which one of the two forbidden behaviors are more permitted? Use common sense. Like we said yesterday, set a certain amount of time. I don't know what your focus ability is. Set a certain amount of time. I, I you know, I don't know what that's going to be for each person. For one person, it could be two minutes. Another person could be five minutes, ten minutes. And say that for that amount of time. Say it as if that's the only prayer you're going to do. After that, you want to rush through it. I don't know. It's nominally better than than not saying it at all, uh, although it creates very bad habits. So I don't really know. But think about the idea. Own the truth of it, because that's what our hearts and our heads can teach us. And if psychology teaches us one thing, um, and that one thing is very compatible with Torah thought, that one thing it teaches us is, is that your head and your heart need to be honest with each other.